folks, welcome back to another top 10 list. I'm here all by my lonesome doing a top 10 list. These are my top 10 Z-Man games from over the years. And uh, there's pretty a pretty good smattering, I guess you could say, of different kinds of games that are here. Uh, some warish, some that are definitely just more like party games uh, than anything else. But uh, these are my top 10 games produced or put out by Z-Man games. So let's get to it. My number 10 is a game called No Thanks. Now I know No Thanks has been reprinted by a number of different companies, but the one that I purchased was the Z-Man copy, and it's the one that I think looks the best. So that's the one that's on my list, and that's why it's number 10 here, because I really have enjoyed this game over the years. It is a very simple game. You play, uh, you know, there's a card out there on the table uh, that has a certain number of points to it. You're trying to get the lowest number of points possible at the end of the game. Uh, so you can either take one of your red tiddlywink chips and place it on there, basically passing and not wanting to take that card, or when it comes back around, you can take it. All the tiddlywinks that are on the card uh, negate from the total of the card and give you more passing power as the game goes on. It's a really simple game to play and I've had a lot of success bringing it to the table so it it's definitely on the list. Number 10, no thanks. Number 9 is a game called Fairy Tale. Now this is one of the first games that had this idea of card drafting in it that uh, gave that to me. Now I've I've given and taken a lot of guff about this whole idea of Seven Wonders not being innovative because of its drafting mechanic because Fairy Tale was already on the scene at that point. Yeah, Seven Wonders is probably the better game, but as far as this game is concerned, it was really, really fun, and it definitely had that card drafting mechanism in it that I really enjoyed. It's pretty much the same thing as uh, with Seven Wonders, but I really do enjoy this game a lot, and uh, it's probably a little bit non-intuitive as far as the different combinations that you can make and, and what card combos off another one to give you more points and all of this kind of stuff. But that's really my only detractor from it. Otherwise, great artwork, great production. Really did enjoy it. Fairy Tale, my number nine. Now, my number eight is a game called Thunder and Lightning. And basically, this is a, uh, a game where one side of is Thor and the other side is Loki. And you're trying to whittle down the other person's opponents. It's a, only a two-player card game. It has a great little uh, hiding mechanism where you can hide different cards but if they if those cards get turned over they can blow up in your face so there's a lot of tension to the game i really do enjoy it though it has great artwork great look to it uh so everything about this game was really super i i really enjoyed it my number eight thunder and lightning my number seven has been a family game staple for quite some time uh, and that is a game called zularetto now, Zularetto has a really neat uh, zoo building mechanism or theme that's wrapped around it. And uh, basically, there are trucks that have different uh, slots in them. And on your turn, you can flip over a tile and add an animal to a truck. And uh, turns can go around and keep doing that until somebody says, you know what, I want to add those animals to my zoo. And so they'll take that truck which means that they're out for the rest of the round. The round continues until somebody takes the last truck. And then you're going to be getting points for how large the pins in our, our in your zoo are. You get bonus points for having concession stands and all that other kind of stuff as well. But it had a really cool theme to it. And I enjoyed the mechanisms as well that were employed. So I really have enjoyed this game over the years. I still have it on my shelf, I believe. Uh, I think I got rid of Aqua Reddo, but I kept Zularetto. But that is my number seven, Zularetto. My number six is probably one of the newest, I believe it is the newest edition uh, from the Z-Man. On, on, from Z-Man Games on my list, and that is Choose Your Own Adventure, The House of Danger. Now, the first time I played this, I was not expecting much at all. I was like, okay, we'll do this while we figure out what we're going to play uh, <laughs> later or next. You know, I was really kind of not giving it much a guff at all, and everybody at the table was like, yeah, well, let's see. We'll play through a couple of chapters, and we'll see how we like it. Well, we ended up finishing the game. We did not want to stop playing. We wanted to see how the story ended. And of course, we played through one of the storylines and wow, it was so much fun. And when a game can do that, that really speaks to me. When it can kind of basically change my mind throughout the course of the game, you go in not really having much of a say either way, but then at the very end of the game, you, you really enjoy it. You actually want to play it again. 
that speaks to me. So that's why it's my number six, CYOA, The House of Danger. My number five is a war-themed game called Duel in the Dark. And this uh, centers around uh, some Allied bombing runs that the British were doing uh, during World War II, I believe. And uh, so the British player has to program his bomb run and he has to go and, and take care of his mission and then get back to the island of Britain. Uh, the German player, on the other hand, is trying to stop him from doing that. And so uh, the problem is he doesn't know exactly where the, the flight plan is going to take them. Uh, so there's the, the, the dual nature of the game where you have one person that is trying to complete a programmed uh, a flight plan or mission and you have another player that is trying to stop them from completing that mission really fun game nice components uh, they tried to do another one for tanks called duel of the giants and just didn't work out very well the rule book was kind of weird uh, but this one was really fun and i enjoyed it a lot my number five duel in the dark my number four is my favorite version of Carcassonne, and that is Carcassonne Amazonas, part of the Around the World line of Carcassonne games, uh, where they take the basic construct of what Carcassonne is, and they add a few uh, different mechanisms to it. In this one, uh, the mechanism added to it is actually a race down the Amazon River uh, to score you more points that way. But on top of that, there is also the look of the game. It's just a very vibrant, lots of colors, uh, and uh, just looks really good on, on the table. So I really enjoyed it a lot. It's my favorite version of Carcassonne. I like Carcassonne, don't get me wrong, but this one is where it really sings because I like that little ra racing mechanism uh, that also occurs. So that's my number four, Carcassonne Amazonas. My number three has a, uh, at the time, had a really unique theme and it's been used uh, for other games uh, recently uh, and since. But uh, this is wasabi. Now in wasabi, you are placing ingredients onto a grid on the board and you're trying to place them in such a way where you can finish uh, these different menu items that you're making for people. If you finish them, in, then you get a certain number of points. If you finish them by getting all of the ingredients in the same order as they are on the menu item, then uh, you get some bonus points. There are some cards that you can use to kind of break some of the rules, mess with some other people that are in the game and, and, and their plans and that type of thing. It's just a really fun game and it looks really neat on the table as well. Uh, so that is my number three, Wasabi. My number two is a legacy version of a game called Pandemic. Pandemic Legacy Season 1 and Season 2 and hopefully Season 3 is going to be coming out here pretty soon. But Pandemic Legacy is my favorite way to play Pandemic uh, hands down. I love the overarching storyline that it provides uh, with the construct that's already there. Uh, and, and Pandemic really is a fun game, uh, but it, for me at least, it can get a little boring uh, if you're just playing the basic game. Now, I like a lot of the other versions that have come out. I think the only one that I haven't played is the... Uh, the one in Holland, I think, where the uh, the, the dikes are breaking and the, the lands are flooding up and that type of thing. That's the only one I think I haven't played. I've really enjoyed all of them. Maybe my favorite non-legacy version is probably Iberia. Uh, but I really, my favorite way to play Pandemic by far in a way is Pandemic Legacy. Uh, and that's why it's my number two. And finally, my number one, you probably knew this one was coming, at least somewhere on the list, but Stone Age is definitely my favorite Z-Man game that's out there. I've played it the most out of all of the games that are on this list, really, uh, even the shorter ones. Uh, so I, I, I really just enjoy uh, the worker placement aspect of the game, where you're sending your people out to these different places to try to get resources that you're then going to use to either build huts or to get more technology types of things that are out there. Uh, I like the mitigation that you can use in the dice, determining by uh, how many people you send out to these different places uh, to try to get as many as uh, of that resource that you need. You also have the tools that you can mitigate uh, the dice rolls with. So uh, there's just a lot of neat stuff in here. I like the uh, the uh, the early civilization theme that's there as well, where you're a chieftain of this tribe that's just kind of uh, eking out its existence in the wild. 
I I just really have had a good time. The the anniversary edition that has just came out, while I think it might have been a tad overpriced, it, it does bring some new life to it with having the double-sided boards, a couple of different rule sets to... Uh, uh, to uh, kind of go into that 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 uh, winter side of the board, I, I I enjoy that too. But yeah, it was a little bit overpriced, but still a really good game and a, and and another jumping in point, I guess you could say. Uh, so I really do enjoy this game a lot. It is a great family game uh, as long as your 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 kids aren't too young. Uh, but even for that, they have my first Stone Age, so you can check that one out too. But my number one is Stone Age from Z-Man Games. And that's that, my top 10 Z-Man games. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments below if I missed something or if you don't agree or if you agree, whatever you'd like. I'll uh, do my best to respond where it would be uh, fortuitous to do so. So that's it. Thanks for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care now.